In today's video, we're going to take a look at potable water, which is what we call water that's safe to drink. We'll also cover how we can get potable water by either treating fresh water sources or desalinating seawater. Now, although potable water is by definition safe to drink, that doesn't mean that it's pure. In chemistry, pure water would have to contain only H2O molecules, whereas potable water often contains other dissolved substances, which makes it impure. This by itself isn't a problem, but there are three criteria for water to meet before it can be considered potable. One is that the levels of dissolved substances need to be fairly low. Another is that it has to have a pH of between 6.5 and 8.5, so that it's not too acidic or alkaline. And lastly, we have to make sure that there are no microorganisms, like bacteria or fungi, swimming around in it. Next, we need to consider where you actually get potable water from. Generally, this depends on where in the world you live. Most countries have a pretty good supply of fresh water, which is just water that doesn't have much dissolved in it. For example, in the UK, we get a fair bit of rain, which is a type of fresh water. And once it's hit the ground, it generally collects as either surface water or groundwater. Surface water sources are things like lakes, rivers, and reservoirs literally bodies of water that are exposed at their surface. Groundwater sources, on the other hand, are those found under the ground, like aquifers, which are areas of permeable rock under the ground that trap water. The benefit of using surface water is that it's easy to access and gets replaced frequently by the rain. However, if it's hot and sunny, it can dry up because it's exposed to the sun. So in warmer parts of the UK, we often rely on groundwater instead. Whichever source we get our fresh water from, though, we still need to treat it to make sure that it's safe to drink. The exact technique we use varies, but it generally involves three steps. First, we take our fresh water and pass it through a wire mesh to filter out any big things like twigs. Next. We pass it through a bed of sand and gravel, which filters out any other smaller solid bits. And finally, we have to sterilize it to kill any harmful microbes like bacteria, which we can do in three ways, either bubbling chlorine gas through it or exposing it to ozone or ultraviolet light. In some countries though, like those in the Middle East, there isn't very much rain, and so they don't have very good supplies of fresh water. Instead, some of them rely on desalination, which is a technique used to extract potable water from seawater. This sounds like a great idea, because there's tons of seawater, so basically a limitless supply. Unfortunately though, both of the techniques that we currently use, namely distillation and reverse osmosis, require loads of energy, and so are really expensive, which makes them kind of impractical for producing large quantities of water. In order to desalinate water by distillation, we basically just do the same thing as in simple distillation, like you've seen in school, except we're boiling much larger quantities of salty water, and the apparatus will look different. Regardless though, we still collect the water vapour, and condense it to give us pure distilled water. On the other hand, in the reverse osmosis technique, the salty water is passed through a membrane, which only allows the water molecules to pass through. This means that all of the ions and larger molecules get trapped, and so separated from the water. So again, we end up with pure distilled water. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.